Welcome to another video. I will continue the series on linear algebra and matrices and today I want to talk about matrix decomposition. I want you to look at a matrix for this video as the number 12. You could write 12 as 12 times 1, right? And you could also write it as 6 times 2. You could also write it as 4 times 3. That's how I want you to view this equation. Look at this matrix. Let's say this is A. If this is A, then you would expect this P to not make any changes to A if you're going to retain the same value on the other side, especially if you want the product of these two to retain the value of A. So this is what I mean. Imagine that 12 times 1, let's say 1 times 12, is the same thing as 4 times 3. In your head, you could look at this as P times A is L times U, where L is a matrix, U is a matrix, A is a matrix, and P is a matrix. You can actually write a matrix as a product of two matrices. It's just a special case, and that special case is where what we call U is an upper triangular matrix, which we can obtain by doing elementary row operations on the original matrix and obtaining an upper triangular matrix, which looks like this. Typically, an upper triangular matrix is going to look like this. You're going to have numbers or not, not zeros, but you definitely will have zeros down here so that where you have all the certain zeros will be under diagonal. You certainly will have zeros here. And this is what you do when you do Gaussian elimination, remember? Because all you're doing is generating as many zeros on the bottom so that you could get your answers on the right. So this is a very important matrix, U. Because this U, we named it U because it is called the upper triangular matrix form of A. So you would ask me, then what is L? Well, just as U is upper triangular, L is the lower triangular matrix simultaneously generated from the elementary row operations we're going to be performing. And this is what it says. If you multiply the lower triangular matrix that we obtain, by the upper triangular matrix that we really need, because this is the most important thing here, then you're going to get your original matrix back. And if it is not the original matrix that we had, uh, it must have been modified or permutated. And when we say permutation, it means you may have switched some rows so it doesn't look like the original matrix, and this guy will be bearing that flag telling you that, hey, remember when you performed this elementary row operation at this point, you switched two rows, and this guy gives the evidence. Otherwise, this is what you're going to get. So this is called the permutation matrix because it gives evidence that you have switched rows while performing the whole operations to obtain your upper triangular form. Otherwise, you get that. Now, when I show you this example, you will see it clearly. I hope I give you, I gave you a very good idea of what we're going to do. This is the most important matrix because from this matrix, which we say is going to be, well, every upper triangular form that you're going to get in this case is going to be in the row echelon form. And the row echelon form straight away helps you get what the rank of the matrix is, what the um, nullity of the matrix is. It tells you it's easy to compute the determinant of the matrix to some degree, okay. But there's so many things you can find about this. And this guy has some unique properties also, and I'm going to explain it to you. Now, one more thing. Look at this matrix. Let's say I have a matrix one, two, three, four. This is A. If I multiply this matrix by the identity matrix for two by two matrices, for example, if I say I, 
for two by two matrices multiplied by A, well, my, it's just one, zero, zero, one, multiplied by this matrix, one, two, three, four. Well, my answer is still this, one, two, three, four. If you do this multiplication, you get the same answer. But what if I want to switch the rows of this matrix? Let's say I want to write, I want this to become three, four, one, two. If I don't want to act directly on A, I can as well act directly on this guy. I could switch the rows in this one, okay, such that instead of multiplying this by this, I switch these rows so that this becomes 0, 1, this is now 0, 1, 1, 0. If I multiply, I'm not going to get this. This is the guy I'm going to get. So, instead of actually switching the rows in a matrix, you can switch the row in this P. This P actually is the identity matrix that we start with, and if you don't touch it, it like I said, if you don't touch it, you get back your original 12. If you touch it, it becomes maybe 2 times 6. That's the modification, because you've changed the 1 and it has become 2, then this 12 will have to change to become six, and that's the whole idea. Okay, now, let's get into the video. So I'm gonna take the first case in which I did not switch any rows, I'm just gonna go straight to creating zeros below the main diagonal, that's the mission. Because when you have zeros here, then you call it an upper triangular matrix, and that's our U. Okay, so watch what's going to happen. I, I need to make a zero here, I need to make a zero here. So I just do the usual um, elementary row operations. I'm going to say that R2, the new R2, will be equal to, I need two of this to be added to this. So I need two of row one to be added to row 2. For row 3, I will need 1 of row 1, just 1. Make sure you write the 1 so you know what number you're picking. Need 1 of this to be added to this. What do I get? I'm going to write the first row. I'm not changing it. Minus 1, 0, 3. I'm going to write 0 here. I need 2 of row 1 added to row 2, so this is going to be 1. 2 of this added to this is going to be 9. Here, I need um, 1 of row 1 added to this, I get a 0. 1 of this added to this is 1, and 1 of this added to this is 5. Okay, we're almost there. We need 1, 0 here. So, now, because I've moved to the second column where the 0 is, the pivot is the next one. So that's what you call the row echelon form. Now, for row echelon form, you don't have to have a one here. It doesn't matter what number is here, as long as there's a number there, okay? There's a pivot number that's not zero. So here we go here, this is the second row, second column. There has to be a number there. If there's no number, we gotta fix it, okay? And that's where the switching may happen. But for now, let's just go on. Now here, I need to make a zero here, so it means what do I do? This is the only part that I need to modify, so I'm going to say row 3 is equal to, I need one of this, one of, oh, I need minus of it, because I'm going to be adding it. So I need minus 1 of row 2 added to row 3. The top is going to be minus 1, 0, 3. Here we're going to have 0, 1, 9. And here I need this is going to be 0, 0, and remember it is minus this plus this. So minus 9 plus 5 is going to be minus 4. And this is the U from this equation. Then what is P, what is A, and what is L? I'm about to show you all four of them in an equation. So this is your equation. Something, because we didn't switch any rows, all we did was just do 
addition, adding a multiple of one row to another, what you're going to have here is basically your identity matrix. multiplied by the original matrix that we're working on. So, on the left-hand side, this is your U. Your U is this thing that you got here. Minus 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, 9, 0, 0, minus 4. And, tell me, what is my L? You see how easy this is? So now, I've got my A, I've got my P, I got my U, and what do I have here is L. L is called a lower triangular matrix. It means everything above it is a zero, so you are gonna have zero, zero, zero. We have one, we're gonna have one, we're gonna have one. That is how you start. There are only three numbers you need because this is a three by three matrix, or at least you did three eliminations. Okay, now you need to put numbers here. The numbers you put here are the numbers that undo the things you did here. So what did you do here? You needed positive two of R1, which was the pivot here. So because you needed positive two of it, you go put minus two of it. So it can undo it and take you back to the original. So you go here because you needed positive one of R1 here in this row to make this a zero, you can see to generate the zero, you go put minus one here. And here, when you got to this point, what did you do? In order to make this a zero, you needed negative one of R2. So now you go back here and you go put a positive one. You have generated all the matrices required to fulfill this equation. This is the decomposition of this matrix. So it's like saying three times four is equal to 1 times 12 because this actually is your 1. Let's test that out. Here, let's do that here. So if I multiply this by this, what do I get? I'm going to get minus 1 here. I'm just going to do the solution to this here. Okay, if you can test it quickly. 1, 0, 0 times minus 1, 0, 0, you get minus 1. 1, 0, 0 times 0, 1, 0, you're going to get um, zero here, you get zero, zero, oh, zero. You multiply this by this, you're gonna get three, zero, zero. That's three. Minus one, zero, three. Does it conform? Oh, it's the same thing we got there. Let's go to the second one. If I multiply this by the first column, minus two times minus one gives me two. Everything else is zero, so this is two. If I go here, I multiply this is zero, this is one, this is zero, so it's just one. If I multiply this way, this is going to be minus 6, this is 9, this is 0. Minus 6 plus 9 is 3. This is 3. Okay. 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3. Correct. Let's go down here. Minus 1, 1, 1. Use it to multiply this. This is going to be 1. Everything else is 0, so this is 1. If I multiply this way, this is going to be 0, this is 1, and this is 0. So it's just 1. And if I multiply this, this way it's minus 3 plus 9 minus 4. So that's minus 7 plus 9, which is 2. 1, 1, 2. That's it. And notice that if you multiply, this is the identity matrix. You multiply this by this, this is what you're still going to get. So what we did is correct. Now, let me show you what happens when you choose to switch rows, okay? If we choose to switch rows, case 2, now, sometimes you choose to switch rows. Sometimes it is necessary to switch rows because you don't have an anchor. Look at here. I had an anchor here. I had a 1. Assuming there was a 0 here, it would be mandatory for me to switch these two rows. And then you go show it here. So let's go. I'm going to say that in the final analysis, we're going to have our P and A. Now, this is going to change. If this changes, this will have to change. Okay, because this can no longer be the original once you change this. It's like saying you're changing 1 times 12 to 2 times 6. You can't say 2 times 12 again. You have to change the 12 to a 6. So let's go here. So I've got the original matrix here and I'm going to 
I want this one up here. I don't want this minus one. We don't like minuses at the beginning. Okay, let's start well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this and say that this row one is going to be switched with row three. So now I have a different matrix. And my matrix now looks like this. One, one, two, two, one, three, and I have negative one, zero, three. Because I have done this switch, I have to immediately go here and switch the first and the third rows. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that. This is gonna be zero, zero, one now, and the middle stays the same, and the bottom becomes one, zero, zero. Okay, now what will be here? This new matrix you obtained after performing a row switch is what becomes your A. Remember, you could use this to switch it back to this. That's what we do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this as my one, one, two, two, one, three, and this is minus one, zero, three. We're gonna go here and say, what do we do? I wanna make zeros here. So if I wanna make zeros, what do I do? I know that this row two is equal to minus two of this, minus two of row one, added to row two. Okay, so, and if I want this, it's gonna be row three, is equal to this added to this. It's just one of row one added to row two. So let's write our answers. One, one, two. Um, what do we have here? We're gonna get a zero here. Um, this is minus two of this added to this. So minus two plus one is minus one. Minus this, minus four plus three is minus one. Nice. And here we're gonna have this plus this. So it's, um, this plus this gives us zero. This plus this gives us one. And this plus this gives us five. Okay, one more move, we need a zero here. And how do we get a zero here if this is our pivot? It's gonna be, just add these two together. So we're gonna say for row three, it's gonna be one of row one, of row two rather, added to row, row three. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze it here. We have one, one, two, one, one, two. This doesn't change. We have zero, minus one, minus one. And finally, we got zero, we got zero. Because as the sum of these two, this is gonna be four. Okay. Ha, huh, we're done. Okay, so we can say this is our U. Our U is gonna be this matrix. One, one, two, four. Nice. And this is our L. How do we get our L? Just go back to the eliminations you performed and undo them. Start by writing one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, sorry. What am I doing? One, and this is a one. Okay, so we just need to fill two zeros here and one zero. I mean, two numbers here and one here. So the numbers you fill in, just focus on this part and this part. Okay, what's the opposite of this? Where is two, you're gonna add it back. What is the opposite of this minus? So it's gonna be two and minus one. And you undo this, it's gonna be a minus one. And here you go. If you multiply these two together, you'll get the same answer as multiplying these two together. And what is that answer? It is still this original matrix. This is decomposition. Remember, our focus is always on this. You can solve a system of linear equations with this. You can find the rank of this matrix. You can find the nullity of this matrix. In fact, you can find some other things that I'm gonna talk about in other videos. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.